city designated uh, rating of the building. And I changed the little markers so that the rating of each school looked like a, a certain kind of marker. So uh, the best is the big white star. If you click at it, it will tell you the district. This is basically all the data that was in that spreadsheet. So it will tell you the, the address, uh, phone number, or principal's name, the grades. And this is uh, excellent with distinction, 461 students. That's, uh, this is God L. Middle School. This is in Finland. That's where I'm from. Uh, so the, the white ones are really good. Uh, the yellow ones, uh, it's not good to yellow, just the green ones are okay. In Ohio, we call this effective. Uh, so you can see there's quite, quite a lot of green. Yellow is just getting by. We call it continuous improvement. And we'll come back to this later, but if I go to an urban center like at Toledo, you can guess what red is. Okay. Uh, I don't remember which one is which. Uh, the circle, let's do a square. The square is what we call academic watch. That means you're getting ready to go under. And the uh, red circle means academic emergency, which, which means so they're going to come in and fire all the teachers and bring good teachers or something like that. I don't, I, I don't, don't hold that. back. I'll tell you really. What's that? Don't hold back. I'll yeah. tell you really. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, it took me just a, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the whole process for you, but this whole map took just a few minutes. It took me longer to find the spreadsheet on the Ohio Department site than it did to make the map. So, and you know how quickly you could probably find a, a, a spreadsheet that has some, some kind of a, a geocode data in it. Ready to start? Those clocks are a little slow, right? Yeah. Uh, yesterday they had the uh, the little uh, fusion talks, the, the 15 seconds on a slide or something. Uh, I teach several undergraduate classes. One of them is classroom management, and we focus on how do you get to know your kids really quick if you're a new teacher. And I have them do six slides, 10 seconds each, one minute. So before I talk about fusion tables, let me introduce myself with my little fusion table, with my little, uh, what, what do we call it? We'll what call it a fusion presentation, because they're only six slides, 10 seconds, one minute. Uh, Otto, Bill Otto, my name is Alvin Trusty. I'm from uh, Finley, Ohio. I teach at the University of Finley. It's my uh, seventh grade picture right there. 1978 was a very good year. <laughs> uh, I'm an Eagle Scout, and when I first worked at camp, I actually taught orienteering. So I'm very interested in maps, kind of a thing I've always been interested in. So my family, my wife teaches at Ohio State. My uh, oldest and second oldest daughters are teachers. The rest of them are still in high school or college or junior high. I take a lot of pictures. This is my dog, <laughs> Taffy. If you Google Hickey Taffy, you'll find that picture. <laughs> And uh, I'm also a presenter. This is a PowerPoint slide I made before you could do PowerPoint. Uh, this is actually a 35 millimeter slide that I made using a Harvard graphics program and printed on a digital printer 20 years ago. I also only wear orange. This is my closet. And you know no one else will show you the closet. And then everyone will talk about, that's the guy that wears orange. And that's now why I wear orange. <laughs> If you really want to know about me, go to this short address. Uh, this is something I started doing just in the last six months. This address will do a Google search for me. That's all it does, just a Google search with my name and quotes. And I enc encourage my students to do this, grab one of the short URLs for your own name, and regulate check it. Just see what it says. So really easy way to find out about yourself. And uh, this is a Google Doc, which you guys all should be able to edit. And it has everything that I'm going to talk about. Uh, and this is kind of different. I'm doing this because Darren sent me a message. He read about this little thing I did. Uh, 
in most of my classes, I end up doing all the projects the students do, uh, kind of as models. So they have, they go, I don't know how to do this, so I'll do something. And in one of my classes, the students have to talk about some technologies that they didn't know how to use at the beginning of the semester. And last fall, I actually heard one of the Google search guys talk about fusion tables in a search class. I didn't even know what it was. I thought, what's that? So I Google fusion tables, and that was my new technology for the semester. I ended up talking about it. So Darren saw this little presentation I put out on my, on my blog, and he says, you got to talk about this, this at Educon. It's unusual here to talk about an app. But here's the thing. How many of you have Google apps? Everyone. Did you know that this uh, Fusion Tables is part of Google Apps? If you say create a new and you skip document, spreadsheet, all that, and go to more, it's right there. Now, if you're in a district using Google Apps for educators and it's not turned on, your administrator just goes in and checks a box, then you have it. Uh, a little quiz. Darren knows the answer because this is a slide that I used in that little presentation. I wanted my students to come up very quickly with a map of every capital in the United States. I forgive you Canadians if you don't know the <laughs> US capitals. But here's my question. Which of the US capitals is the furthest south? Now, if I asked you that you didn't have a map, how would you? Let me help you. Here's a line. What do you think? Could you very easily tell that Honolulu is by far the furthest south? OK, now, making that, little, making that little map was trivial with fusion tables. Uh, here's the whole thing if you really want to see how far south it is. What I did is I went to Wikipedia, and I typed in the US capitals, and it had a list of US capitals. So I went down, highlighted that data, copied it, started a blank Google spreadsheet, and I pasted it in there. That was the hard step. Now, if you don't, if it's been a while since you have a spreadsheet class, you don't remember how to do formulas and stuff, there is one particular property of a fusion table that you have to understand right away. And that is you can have one column, and only one column, that gets mapped with an address. So if you have city, state, uh, or street, city, state, you need to put those together into one column so that it uses that column as your uh, geocode data. So what I did is I inserted a column right here. <laughs> I inserted a column right here, and I used the formula that says take what is in column D2, in row 2, column D, and connect it to what's in A2. And using the answers, hands, it takes the actual information in those columns and puts it into the columns. It's, there's a function called concatenate, it does the same thing. Use whichever one you think is easier. And what happens is I end up with, and if you notice, I actually put a space and a comma in there too, so that my final data is, ends up being city slash state. Then I just copied that down for all of them. Now, another trick I learned, that's a formula, and Fusion Tables isn't going to understand a formula. So the last step before you kick this into a Fusion Table just highlight the formulas and say convert them to values. Once you do that, you have a, a column that has all the, the data in it, and you're golden. And at that point, I usually get rid. I physically delete all the columns that have address data. That way, Fusion Tables doesn't get confused which column I want to make an app. Now, you can physically change it, but I like to have it straight off, figure out which one it is. So then, like I said, I go to Google Apps, Create, I go down to More, and I select Fusion Table. <coughs> now, normally, when you create a doc or a spreadsheet, it just gives you a blank doc. 
But before you get to that step, fusion tables will ask you if you want to bring in some data. And usually you do. You've got a spreadsheet or a Google Doc already created that has some address data. And here's where you can bring it in. So uh, when I created that spreadsheet originally with all the state capitals, I actually saved it in Excel. So I had an Excel spreadsheet that I wanted to bring in. So I just went out. Here's what that spreadsheet looked like. You notice I actually deleted all of the other columns because I didn't want to have to mess with anything that was going to make this project more than five minutes long. So all I have is the, the city and the state. So I select my state capitals, import the thing. It asks me if I have a column at the top that's uh, a label. I say yes, the first column. By default, and this is handy, this uh, allow exports is checked, which means if people just go with the flow and go yes, 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 which most people do, all the data that people put into fusion tables, you can export out. So if you're doing a project and there's a similar project, you can very easily get that data out. It's very handy. And here's my fusion table. So I only have that one column, which you can see. It's yellow because Fusion Tables thinks that that is geodata. It thinks that's some sort of address. So if I have two columns, let's say I had street, city. Actually, with the Ohio data, there was one for county. Even I was a column that said, what county is this going? So all of those columns were yellow. And it picks the first one it thinks to use to make the map. They're yellow because they haven't been geocoded yet. So this process uh, that Google goes through to figure out, it actually converts all of the data to latitude and longitude. And there are some limitations on it. It'll only allow you to do either 100 or 150,000 data points a day, I think. OK, so it's <laughs> so really, but, yeah. <laughs> but uh, the school district data that I showed you was 3,600. You know, so if I wanted to do that, I'd be 100 times in a day. But it also, if you have thousands of data points, it can take it 15, 20 minutes to geocode. So the first time you do a really big set, go make a cup of coffee. Come back, and it's got a little scroll bar. It'll tell you how long it takes. So this is the kind of spreadsheet view. The map view over here is the map. Okay. So when I click on that, that's what it does. This little geocode thing. It doesn't really tell you time. It just says fifty percent, seventy-five percent, and then you have your map. That's it. So any kind of data you have, if it has an address, you can make use of one of those. Explaining how I did it took probably three times as long as it took me to do that. Okay, which once you understand how to do a, a process, that's that's not that unusual. So there's a, once again there's a, all the data. Sometimes it'll tell you it's done, and there might be a couple points missing. Just you know, give it five minutes, hit refresh, and they'll all come back. And you can always go back and look at the the data and see if any of them are yellow to know for sure that they've been geo. Geocode. Here's something else you can do. If you know latitude and longitude, it happens that's the latitude and longitude of my house. So just realize that. <laughs> that's, that's my uh, wife's hand holding my cell phone. So we most of us have latitude and longitude devices within our cell phones. So you can actually collect latitude and longitude data and put it right into a fusion table and map that. Instead of saying Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or a street address, you can just go right down to the meter. Okay? So when I put this information into a Fusion Table, you do have to put longitude first, latitude second, and then in the map, you have to tell it that you have geodata in two fields, and this only works if it's latitude, longitude data. You can't say, Here's an address, and here's an address. It, it has to be, if you have two fields, it's going to say, OK, this is latitude and longitude. Uh, tell me which two columns they're in, and then it'll geocode the latitude and longitude. Yes? It needs to be in that order, or you need to specify which column it is. It'll, it'll 
you tell where the longitude is, and it'll go to the next one to get the latitude. It expects them to be back to back, and it expects longitude to be first. Okay. So this is a little project I did uh, at a school that's close to the university. Uh, my office is uh, right here, and the school that I'm showing you is just uh, a few blocks away. Uh, this is uh, in, in Finley. There are only a couple schools that are uh, impoverished, and this is one of those schools. So at the university, we tend to do a lot of projects with them. We uh, have a reading program and uh, help out on field days and things like that. So what I did is I went over there, and they had a little set of GPSs. This is elementary. It's kindergarten to third grade. You know, what's a teacher do with the GPS? So I walked around the schoolyard, and these, you know, here's the flagpole, the front entrance. You can actually tell the difference between the pitcher's mound and home plate because these will go down to a few feet. So I walked around and I got all these places. And then we we gave the kids a list of all the latitudes and longitudes. It was a scavenger hunt. Go find what what is at this point. And you know, these kids are all running around with these little things, and that's pretty cool. Uh, you can also do polygons. So. Uh, I'll show you a little bit later the, like, the outline of Ohio. It's actually a map that's created with polygons. In this, I walked around. This is the building where my office is. I walked around the building, and at each corner of the building, I just took the latitude and longitude. All you have to do is have your last point equal your first point, because it has to close the, the whatever your old shape is. And it goes into... Uh, I have a link that tells you exactly how to format the data. If you've ever done uh, a Google Earth type of uh, activity, it's the same kind of format. You put the uh, all of the latitude longitude data in there, and then it will make a shape of whatever whatever you did. So I went to the corner of the, each corner of the building, and it made that shape. You can do more complicated things. This is Ohio. Each one of those is a school district within Ohio. And by the way, anything that deals with uh, elections, so electing people to your school board, uh, electing your congressman, anything that has a map that's related to elections, there, there's a map already in uh, Google Fusion that you can grab. I did not make this. Remember I said the default is let people export it? So I just searched, and I have a link where you can go for all the public resources. I just searched for Ohio Public School Map. And it's like a Google search, so there's options. Like one of them is Map, one of them is Fusion Tables. Click on Fusion Tables, and then it'll start finding maps for it. It's a, a very neat thing. Once you have the map, then if you have some data that's similar, and actually if there's one field that's the same, this is every school district in Ohio. I can go to the Ohio Department and I can get a spreadsheet that has poverty information about every district, that has teacher pay about every district, just about anything you can think of, I can get it for every district. And this has a field that's like the serial number of the school. The spreadsheet has a field that matches. So I can merge them and say, Make this poverty data, match it up with the school districts, and that's what this is. The more red it is, more impoverished. The darker blue it is, less impoverished. Now remember, you can only geocode one piece of data. So that's my data. I can't say, OK, let's see how those school ratings look, because that's a different address. If I want to say, where's my school? address in relationship to this map. You can't do that just with the, the Fusion Table app. But all kinds of people have used the Google Map API, and they've written tools that let you do that. So I'll show you a tool that, that lets you do just what I, I said. Did anybody see this? It was on, uh, I think I saw it on Bowling Point. Someone made a map of every bomb that was dropped during the Blitz, World War II. So it says, uh, October 7th to June 6th. And I looked at this and I thought, gosh, that looks a lot like a fusion table. What well, turns out, the people who did this uh, released the first day of the Blitz all of the data that they used in a Google Doc. 
So I uh, grabbed this data. This is the first night of the blitz. Uh, I grabbed it right at the Google Doc, and look, there's a column right there that is an address. So what I did is I imported it into a fusion table. So here is my, again, this took five minutes. I had their data, I just made a fusion table. So this is my data, this is their data. Oh, I'm sorry, if you click on one, it'll tell you all the information about it. And I compared it to their data. You can see, pretty good. Uh, there are some oddball addresses here and there, but come on, it's took five minutes. If I have data like this, I can create visuals really quick for my students. Uh, just like every city in this country, Finley is going through hard times. And uh, this was on December 29th, so it's a Saturday before New Year's Day. Uh, I read this article that said they were going to close a firehouse. Now, normally it doesn't matter, but this particular firehouse was of interest to me for reasons I'll show you visually. Uh, so I read in this that the fire chief had been working with data on a map to determine where the calls were, and based on that information, which one of these firehouses they should close. Well, I don't know the fire chief, but Finley's a town of, I don't know, 40,000 or so, but so it's, it's not like, uh, you know, Philadelphia, you can't get a meeting with the fire chief in this town, I'm sure, but I went to the city website, found the email address of the fire chief, and sent him an email. I said, hey, I'm talking to Educon. Okay, I had to explain what Educon was. He didn't, I'm sure he wouldn't know. And I'm talking about real data on maps. Is there any chance I can get this data that you've been collecting showing where all the fires are? Now, this is on Saturday before New Year's. So he was off through New Year's, probably until the second. But I remember I get an email the day of the Fiesta Bowl. Okay, so it was a couple days after New Year's. And he attached a spreadsheet and he said, hey, here's our spreadsheet. Any way you can help, it'd be great. It was kind of one of those, yeah, here's what you want. You probably can't help me. So during the football game, actually at halftime, I kind of cranked the whole thing through. But then it was uh, a few thousand fires. So it's a lot of data. So I finished watching the game while it was geo coded. OK? Uh, this is a map of Finley. There are three fire stations, the original part of kind of, this is downtown, so there's actually a little more Finley here at the bottom. About 10 years ago, it was predicted that the city would continue to grow in this direction, so they built a fire station right there. That is the fire station in question, whether they should close it or not. The problem is, I live right there. <laughs> so this data is important to me. It turns out, I found out after all this, I live right here, the fire chief lives right there. <laughs> so he doesn't let any of his personal information come into this decision. All right. So I put all this into, uh, you know, I get the spreadsheet. Now look, it took me a minute to figure out what this was. 1412 Blanchard. Blanchard is a street in Finley. So I had to put this and this together. These are all Finley fires, so, so you didn't have a column said Finley. These are all Finley fires. So what I did is I added a column and I said, if this number, this street address, and Finley, comma, Ohio. So I just, you can add a comma, but you can also add text. So over here I ended up with a column that had full street address down to the city and state. And then I dumped it into fusion tables. Now remember, this whole thing took me 15 minutes. It geocoded for about an hour to get all the stuff in there. Now, in case you can't tell, this is all the data. Here are the fire stations. Now, if you're a fire chief and you need to decide which one of the stations do I close, how tough is it to tell which one of these, oops, oh, sorry, go back too far. Which one of these is the one that's not getting the very many fires? This is the one I'm going to close. There is absolutely nothing from here over. And the rest of these, uh, there's plenty of fires all around each one of them. So looking at the data for just a few seconds, 
pretty obvious which one of them they need to close based on where the fires are. But this data is uh, filterable. I can go into a fusion table and I can go to a, one of the columns was a description. And on a description, you can, I'll show you how to do this, you can connect that to a different marker. The same way I did with the school designations, excellent, all the way down to academic emergency. So uh, H is our house fires. So here's all the house fires. Once again, you can see barely any of them over here as comparison to these other stations. Here's all the car fires, not that many car fires. You can actually see where everything is. So I just went in and say, show me label car fire. Actually, it was called, I think this icon is called taxi or something. Mm -hmm. uh, and it creates this map. You can also, you can filter by any column. So the, there's a column in there that has the date of every fire. So I said, show me 2007. Now remember the prediction when they built this was over time there would be more fires. This is about where that fire station is. There would be more fires that way. So here's all fires 2007, 2008. And you can see there's not, we're not going this way. So I, after the festival ended, I emailed this back to the fire chief. And okay, it was at night. Within five minutes, I get this, oh my God, kind of response. How did you do this? I just sent this data to you. Can you meet with me? Okay, so I didn't have to get a meeting with the fire chief. So I met with them and I found out that the county engineer had worked for four months <laughs> to create a paper map with push pins in it. Okay? Because they couldn't afford to buy any kind of software to do this kind of map. So uh, I showed his secretary how to do this. She, she was good at Excel. I don't know, maybe a half hour. I, and she's uh, making all kinds of uh, maps for stuff now. Uh, really easy stuff to do with the maps. So is that right? I think this is kind of cool stuff. Yes. <laughs> Any ideas on what kinds of stuff you'd like to see people make maps of? At the bottom of my little Google Doc, I've got projects. If you've got, I had a teacher say, you know, we keep track of dead animals to identify migratory patterns, maybe. They do the date, the latitude, the longitude, and what they found dead. So they're going to be geocoded that data, and maybe over time they can identify, like I said, migratory patterns or things like that. Yes. I know Philadelphia would be interested in seeing not only because we have 37 schools are slated for closure, some also slated for grade reassignment and things of that sort um, are merging. And but not only that, but also the schools where uh, that are going to be impacted because they're going to be accepting the students from the closed schools. So I could see that being kind of geocoded and color, you know, one color means closure, one color means this school's accepting new students from a closed school, things of that sort. How would that be useful? Sure. Yeah. How would you show a migratory pattern? And I'm asking because. If you record the date that something happens, okay, let's say that you have a road where deer cross, and they get hit by cars. So every time you find a dead deer, you write down the date, what you found there, where you found it. And then you can do that. You can filter by day if you want. You can say, show me Monday, this day, Tuesday. You can say, show me January. However you want to filter that data. And just like I did 2007, 2008, you can see, and by looking at the data real quick, maybe there's a pattern. Maybe certain times of year, animals are dying at certain places. And if you if you take a picture, like on an iPhone, I know it puts the yeah, if, in the metadata. If you would like to ask the metadata now to geocode. If you turn on GPS up when you take photos, yeah, you got it right there. So how do you get that metadata out of the, like, let's say I had a picture, like a series of pictures of those dead animals, and I yeah. wanted to, I wanted to use that as my resource, not the pictures, but the data tied to it. How would I get uh, There's a uh, program to do it. You can upload to Flickr. And if you tell Flickr, when I upload a picture, allow the geo data to mm -hmm. perpetuate to the, to the site, it'll do it. Is 
show you the, the movement pattern on one map. Well, you could do a map that uh, had all of the data. But if you wanted to see like a movie you're talking about, you'd have to do sequential filters. You'd have to filter it by date or filter it by some event if you wanted to see kind of a movie. Now, I have a link. I have a link in the document. Open up the document. Well, let me tell you, I'm, I'm doing a, I'm under contract to look at children who are in outside educational institutions, like where they were sent for residential, by behavioral health, or courts, or human services. And I'm doing program review. So everywhere we go, the institutions say, oh, the kids are in and out for 25 days. Well, yeah, but when I pull back and I look at a, an aggregate summary of data, maybe they were in and out of your institution three or four times, or maybe they were in an institution before yours and one after yours. So I'm trying to get some data to show that we're not talking about 25 days days. We're talking about kids who just keep moving. So is, if, if I have all the data and the dates, is there a way to get that up there that people can see that? But well, you can say filter on this student and see where they are on all those dates. So if you're coding students, say, by an ID number or something, mm -hmm. You could say filter by this ID number, and then you can see everywhere that student has been. And it would show on one map. Yeah, okay. yeah. As long as you said they're in this building or that building, as long as they're in the in the, the spreadsheet, okay. how many students? Are, well, I'm looking at thousands of unemployment cases. Yeah, you know, remember there's 100, 150,000 limit per day. Right. I'm taking slices, like maybe who's there now or who was there. Yeah. Um, we're. We've got a long way to go, and we're trying to avoid dealing with individuals. But what we're doing with uh, not sure that works. It's kind of designed for that an open place to show it, so it looks like it will be all the time in one viewer. So it's not that really good. I have. Uh, a form. If you go down to uh, send Google form entry to uh, a fusion table, and I, I have a link under that that says example. If you click on that example link, it'll take you to this form. Now, uh, I also have a link to the page. Google has a document that tells you how to do this. When, when you do this, and they warn you multiple times, the password for your Google account is embedded in this document that can be in the clear. So they recommend that you set up what they call a role account, which is the role of this account is to do Fusion Table maps. Okay, so you don't use it for anything personal, so if it's ever hacked, you don't have to worry about that. So I set up uh, a role account and created this form, which feeds into a Google spreadsheet. That's a Google form, it just goes into a Google form spreadsheet. And then there's a little script that you install in your spreadsheet that connects it to a blank fusion table. Now, I played around with this probably the most because I had problems getting it to work. And you'll notice I, I have a second field there that says keep my data private or don't keep my data private. What I figured out is you can't just have people at a conference put in their address because the way the script works, there have to be two fields. The other can just be a throwaway. Okay. But you have to have two fields, otherwise the script gives you an error every time. So I Google in the air, I found a lot of different solutions. Or I guess this is kind of a generic error. But eventually I found it related to Google's table, Google tables, and it said that you just have to have more than one field. So if you guys go to that and, and you type in, don't type in your home address, type in your school address or something like that, I'll show you how on the fly, we can collect data like this and then make a map. Is it the Send Google Forms? It's uh, Send Google Forms example. So underneath the Send Google Forms, there's uh, a link that says example. And it starts off uh, uh, docs.google.com. Could you give us the original I'm sorry? The original Google Docs site? So which one are we clicking on right now? 
I don't need to Google send Google Forms uh, the example right there. What's that? No, as much if you say Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, it's going to put a dot right in the middle of town. So as much information as you get it, uh, you don't have to have a zip code, but if you add it, it doesn't care. It'll, if it can't figure out where Philadelphia, Pennsylvania is without the zip code. Yeah, my hometown, population of 300, so with that zip code. So if you put a form out there and you do a field like this, Say your address, you're going to get a lot of different ways that people different You can get a lot of different data. Yeah, and so under there, I could write street, city, state, it's just an example. Uh, but yeah, if you say, you know, when can we meet? Some people will say, you know, June 29th. Some people will say next Tuesday. Street or Alabama. But the geocoding is going to figure that out. Right? Yeah, but it, the geocoding will work. It just won't be as accurate as you want. To know that you live in Mobile is a lot different to know that you live at 100 North Main Street in Mobile, right? Uh, what I did is um, I I just opened up Firefox. That way, I could be logged in to two different Gmail accounts without a problem. This is the data you guys uh, are entering right now. And uh, what I have to do to, to get this from the Google form over to the uh, Fusion sheet, the Fusion, I have to uh, run the script that's connected to my, that's actually connected to my uh, Google form. It's connected to the spreadsheet. So you just go to script manager. Like I said, if that document, like right above this uh, example, tells you the whole process to go through to do this, including the script. They have the script. There's a small part you have to change so that it connects to your fusion table. But then once you do that, you have to go back and run this. Now, let's say you have people just going out and entering stuff in, and it's going to a live map out there, and you don't want to have to go run the script every time somebody adds something. You can set the script up and connect it to a timer and have it go every five minutes or however, whatever increment you set. You and it will reform the code on that timer. Yes. Is there a, a repository of different scripts? Oh, yeah. They, uh, in the very first one, the help. Yes. There's thousands and thousands and thousands of scripts. So, uh, right, just so you can see kind of a, a before and after. Uh, before we started, I put in uh, Finley, Ohio. This is 1000 North Main Street is where the university is located. Uh, and if I reload this, you're going to see it's just going to have... Oh, they're starting to get a few. I didn't even run the script yet. So if I run this script, I just go up here and run it. Run it. And do a reload. And right now we've got about 12, 20, 21 in here. It'll take it a second. It does this air if you try to click the run too many times? <laughs> you know, then run it again, and and you'll end up with a, a map that has all your stuff on it, and, and stuff will show up. <laughs> if we're doing real time stuff, generally things take about five minutes. Just at all the fusion tables I've made, that's what I've got about five minutes. So if you're trying to do something, you know, bam, 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 like this, this is not perfect. But about five minutes of work. Right? Let me show you the uh, layer tool. Uh, that's one of the, what I what I found to be um, one of the really useful things to do. Um, let me just pull up the docs so you can see this. Um, this link right here, the uh, Fusion Tables Layer Wizard. Uh, if I go to that, 
it uh, lets me take an embedded link and connect it to another embedded link map. So it's essentially, if you've ever used Photoshop and it has layers, it kind of works like that. And they're stackable. So if I have a map, a solid state map, I want to put it in first, it's on the bottom, so that my markers end up being on top of that. But if you reverse it, you just can't see the markers because the solid state will block it out. Uh, to do this, I'm going to go back to this data that I uh, shared with you. Uh, under these projects, I've got the uh, Ohio State of Ohio Poverty by School District. So this is a map. There you can see that map. What I'm going to do is I'm going to copy that URL. And I'm going to put it into my, my layer wizard. And when I put it on the, the layer, uh, here's my map. And it's right away it's interactive. So then I want to add a layer. So I go back to this document. And I want the school district um, designations, different Google uh, Fusion Table map. So I'm going to copy this, go back to my uh, Fusion Table, and paste it. Put that on. Now I have both. OK, let's make this a little bigger. Uh, let's make it uh, 900 by 600. Uh, what you make it that big? It, uh, a deeper map down there. So now I've got a bigger map down. There. Okay. So now I have all those little markers on top of that poverty map. The markers tell me what is the Ohio rating for the district. The map is what the government says the poverty rate is for the area. And remember, red in both cases is the worst. For the schools, white is the best. For the map, blue is the best. So if you have white on the map, you might predict that. That means a wealthy district, school, schools are really good. Red on red means really poor school in a high poverty area. So if I, uh, Finley's in Northwest Ohio, here's Finley. Uh, we have uh, in uh, around Finley uh, very high poverty. You can see there's the only red here is actually uh, a digital academy, a charter school. That is the only red that is in the whole county. Uh, once we get closer to Toledo, though, here's uh, Bowling Green, here's Toledo, and amazingly, uh, the governor of Ohio has not solved the poverty problem because now, the red is the most impoverished area. And look, all of the red poor schools inside of the, the red impoverished area. You get outside, you get to the suburbs, and look, right away you start to see these white schools. That's the best. So this is a really easy way to connect two pieces of data that no politician has ever seemingly been able to connect. Judging from the politics of Ohio. <laughs> um, I, I did the same thing. Oh, by the way, uh, down here at the bottom, it gives you the HTML. So if you have a web server, you just copy that, save it to an HTML file, throw it on your web server, and you have that particular map with those uh, pixel resolutions the way you did the whole thing. You can put it on your website. You'll have to explain what it is because they might. They might not know what the colors mean and all that kind of stuff, but you know, that's not that's not good to do. Uh, I did one just to see what if we pay our teachers a lot more money? Maybe that'll solve the problem. You can get that data in a spreadsheet connected to every building, and I made another map instead of the district ratings. The colors changed in proportion to how much the teachers were paid. Now, how do you think that related to the rating system of the schools? Absolutely no correlation. Some of those red schools are paying the teachers the highest. Some of the, the white ones, especially way out in the, the suburb, well, way out in the sticks, some of those white ones are paying the teachers the lowest rate. In fact, overall, if you look at the data, you might say you should pay your teachers less to get the schools to work better. Which I won't be putting that map on the internet for the politicians to find. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you.
Uh, that's the cool stuff, right? that last little layer thing. That's kind of a, wow, now you can take any. And there's no limit. If you've got two or three different pieces of data, you want to stack them. Just remember the first one goes on the bottom, the others go on the top. And you can stack as many as you want. Save the HTML, pump it out there on your website. you got an interactive map. Uh, I've made maps for all kinds of things. Should use the fire stuff. Uh, our placement officer at the university, at places all our student teachers, wanted a map of every single district that we use for placement and, and show the uh, free and reduced lunch. That's how the schools end up measuring poverty. Wanted that data connected to where we place our schools so that when we do our accreditation, we can show that we're placing our students in, in diverse climates. So uh, I generated maps fairly easily, maps that only use the school districts that we place students. So it's not all of Ohio, it's just those select schools. Put the little tippers on there, it didn't take very long. And then when NK comes and looks at this stuff and they see these maps, hopefully there, they'll be able to understand. <laughs> uh, I did, uh, in classroom management, we did an overnight field trip. Uh, my students were the overnight teachers for Finley City School seventh grade environmental camp. So we made maps of all kinds of stuff at camp. But I, I think in the document that we shared, like the generic one we use, just so the kids can find all their, their way around, where they fish, where they canoe, where they shoot the bows and arrows, where they sleep, where they get pop, all that kind of stuff. And it, it turns out this is the camp that I went to as a kid, and it, there was no good map, interactive map anywhere that I could find. So I went to my old scoutmaster, who's retired and now kind of lives at the camp. I said, do you have like a paper map? Sure. And it had all the labels of everything. I It took the longest part was typing in the names of all the buildings, popped it into a future map. Let me show you one other thing. A lot of those maps that I showed you had custom little markers, like the house fires for H, the car fires with a little taxi. There's a uh, one of the document links that I gave you is for custom markers. It's called uh, place marks. So here's that document. If you scroll down, it it shows you what these things look like, but the handy thing is right here. This is a, a, a Google map that has all the different markers on it. So you can very easily look at them and say, okay, what is that one right there called? And that's called CAVS. So what you do is in your fusion table, let's say that you have a column that says house fires. Sort your spreadsheet by that column. That way all your house fires are right together. And then next to it, put whatever, whatever that name is. If it's, uh, you know, the H icon, just put it right there and copy it down next to all of the house fires. And then when you go into, when you go into your fusion table, Here's my data for the, the schools and how they rated. When I go to the map, there's two things. The location is where you tell it this column is my address. I named that column address. And I took out all of the other columns that had geo data in them. So I took out the county and all that stuff because I didn't want it to ever get confused. You can always go right here and say this column that's my geo code. The other thing you can do is the style. The style is where you tell that little marker what you want it to look like. So I have a column uh, that I call a label because Fusion Table calls those things labels. I just try not to be confusing. So the, <laughs> the column that has the labels in it is a named label. If I go back and look at my data right here, Way over here to the side, last one. Oh, right. Here's my label column. So uh, whatever, in this case, I sorted them by their academic rating. And all the ones that were emergency, 
got the red square uh, academic wedge against the red circle or however I did them. So it's just a copy and paste. And I, and I did all that in Excel before I imported the data in because it's just easier to do it that way. Also, one last thing. How many times have I said that? <laughs> Uh, let me show you the poverty map. Because if you have a map that has a, a geographic shape on it, like the school districts, you can tell that shape to behave differently based on data within your spreadsheet. So when I got this, and this was one of those that was created by the federal government, and I, if you like, I said if you go to that search tool and search, you're going to find pretty much any kind of map that has the government connected. So elections, taxes, any of that stuff, and most of them, when you get them, there's going to be one solid color, but they'll be outlined in whatever shape the map represents. So what you can do is you, when you make your map, first off, let's look at this data. There is a, a column in this data that has the rate of poverty. That's the critic. I want each of the school districts to be a different color based on the rate of poverty. And if you look at these numbers, it goes from 2.98. I have no idea what that means, but it goes from 2.98. Uh, you can see it's getting bigger. I'm not sure what the highest one is. Well, what I did in my map is under that map style where I tell that, I, before I use a label, and I say, I think this look like a cat, a cat, make this look like an H. Well, in this one, uh, I want it, uh, that's not what I want. OK, suddenly I'm confused. They changed the way this looks. At the location. Oh, stop. It's not, they changed it. This is the problem with Google. This is one of the success experimental. Usually it kicks up a little thing and it says, what column has the data that you want to use? So I told it the rating. And then divide and check how many, how many different groups you have. Uh, and then well, but I, the data is already done. I don't know why my data disappeared. So you can pick the rating. And then you can tell it from 0 to 5, make it whatever color you want, okay? and so on, and so on, and so on. And then you end up with all those different <coughs> colors on that map. And that makes it a whole lot easier to sell. In this case, a lot of poverty, not a lot of poverty. So that's just one more little thing. Okay, this is the discuss part. <laughs> <laughs> Has anybody thought of something? Gosh, Adam, this would be great for this yeah. application. If you're teaching history, teach it. And you took a, an old thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And then put that in the bottom layer. And then start putting some modern information on top of it and kind of go through the layers. And I think if you search, there are some old maps on there. Yeah. This would be really remarkable. And then, you know, and I don't think you can teach you some of the kids. Right? The teacher do it once to understand the process, but, but, but once get, you get the kids, kids still, that's, that's when you start seeing it. Great yeah. 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 You might be interested in your public library, those things called Orpers. Orpers no, I have where you can take old maps that are scanned. You can go to maps.nypl.org. Can you add that to my Google Maps? Yeah. And so you basically digitize an old real map. And then you warp it by grabbing a couple coordinates and you play it on a Google so Maps. And it brings it to life. So then that can be that base information rather than manual entry and become part of the data yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and uh, there's a link that says like uh, heat maps or something that I gave you. Uh, someone has created an API that lets you change the, the physical size of the marker. So if you want to show like an area is growing in some way, if you have some data, you can change those markers that way. And they, have, if you follow that link, they have a whole bunch of examples. They, 
they deal with animation and uh, uh, auto, auto, automatically they'll show some sort of, uh, instead of filtering and saying, show me 2007, 2008, it just does it right there. And you can see how the map changes over time right within a little HTML box. I'm thinking too, just for like GIS stuff that are teaching elementary kids, like you did the school, just send the kids out with the teacher's phone or they have iPads or whatever and go out and, you know, take the pictures or get, however they're going to get the data um, and then go back and put it, you know, where the swing sets are, where the, you know, playground and, and all that kind of stuff just to start to grasp their understanding of geography and the space that they, they walk every day. Um, I think that would be. Let's say they wanted to make a map of every person who owns a gun in the state of New York. <laughs> That's how the map was made. If you look, if you just Google that, you can find that. That was around Christmas time, right? Right after the shooting. That was a fusion table map. And they all they did was have red dots. And the thing is, on a fusion table map, uh, if any piece of data uh, that you click on, it will show you the information that they've put into the spreadsheet. So it has every name and address. All you have to do is click on it. They were saying, well, you can't get everybody's name and address. Well, the fact is, if you click on everybody, you can't get everybody's name and address. So that could lead to some privacy discussions with your students. What should I be putting on a map like this? I own property. <coughs> You know, somebody who wants to know where I live, it's a public record search from a publicly available website. But uh, people don't know that. Yes, they could, but apparently. Again, if you're dealing with kids, it's a good uh, time to talk about privacy. Is there any way to turn off all that? Yeah, all, all of this is controlled um, in the card right here. And you can tell it um, what you want on the card. So if I say don't put the uh, phone number, uh, that part goes away. So now when I click on one of these, uh, it doesn't. Uh, didn't do it. Wait, maybe the part is different on the. Uh, yeah, it's for the map. It's this change window album. So if I say don't show the phone there, there's this thing called a card. Uh, I haven't come up with use for it, but maybe you guys can. It just takes each of the pieces of data and puts it on a card like that. Uh, and it has different settings. So now I've removed the phone number on the map, so the phone number is gone. So you can, and it's uh, HTML, so if you want to add something, you can customize it with HTML. Can you just see so you can just put in like change the color of one line if you want to highlight that line, for example. Oh yeah. 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 Could, you, could you put a whole story? How how limited? I'm sorry. Could you put a whole story in text of the card? So you're thinking like a a, a lit trip. Yeah. 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 My wife teaches uh, early childhood literacy, and she she uses uh, Google Earth because there's tons of those already there. Uh, but you could you could do this for a lit trip. And then it's it's a little bit easier to add new data points into your story that way, because you just go to your fusion table, add a, add another row, put in your uh, geo code, your address, or whatever. Like that. I it would be limited on how big that bubble gets on the screen, but that's the one limit. As as you were. Um, exploring the connection between how much teachers get paid and where they are and all that stuff. It yeah. struck me that there's a lot of work, um, you know, from the New York City Writing Project, a lot of work around writing. And, like, what conclusions can you draw from the correlations you're, you're seeing? Like, they're not obvious, right? They, they, they need to be teased out and proved and backed up by other people, by other Data it would be great if we could come up with maybe like lobbyist payments connected to something or yeah, maybe what I, and teachers. Hey, what how do you make more money as a teacher? There's two ways. You get more degrees or you get old, right? So I bet Ohio keeps track of all teacher its its ranges. 
and it's years experience, it's not age, but that, there's a correlation. So I'm sure you could say, let's look at experience of teachers, and those are the districts that are going to be probably but higher. You, know, you got into the detail, what I'm, which is great. But I, what I'm trying to say is that there's a lot of there's a lot of like this kind of conversation that yeah. we could have with kids and they could work out through. Let the, the kids do the research to try to find those correlations. Sure. Yeah. On whatever they find. Like I said, this is one of those things. It's just so easy to make a map that you can spend the time on that conversation. And, and they can just try four or five things, and so all of a sudden, gosh, there's a correlation. More, more, more people stay than I thought. You guys are missing your planes? <laughs> How do you think this compares with GIS software? I mean, the, this kind of uh, GIS software, I have not found any that's uh, free. No, yeah. it's not. Yeah, uh, yeah. Huge, huge GIS. There's an open source version of our GIS. GIS. Q, if you Google Q, 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 Right. More. I think it's something you limited in your ability. The, the reason I like this, it's part of Google Apps. Yeah. So you can say to your teachers, they have Google Apps. Yeah, they have it. Right. So that they, it's not another piece of software that you have to, even if it's open source and free, you can still have to download and install it. Mm -hmm. You might have to use it all that time. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm dying to do this, and I've had it three different times now and messed it up, and I'm going to be exhausted. Would you mind walking, <laughs> uh, would you mind walking us through, like, you know, very you know, small set of data, and, and um, <laughs> and that was Mapper, would you mind? I don't know if anybody else wants that, but I'm trying to be successful as one. I mean, one or more of a list. Yeah. I've got it in the table, I still can't get it on there. The more general point that I would go is, and I would say, I'm having a good time. Okay, it's not just like you I need time to kind of mess up the plan, you know? Uh, I have a video that I used this, I told you, the Darren Sultz yeah. presentation I made, and it was kind of the, you know, right, 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 what video. Yeah. When, I, when I get back, I'm going to make a video yeah. that shows you, here's how it's used. Exactly. And in an earlier session, we were talking about moves, yeah. and Darren is doing a, a move, and he said, you know, what if we do a move of just this kind of stuff, making that use the music tables? And so you got all the people that there'd be a little bit of a learning curve, but then once they're making them, it's fairly found. But also, you know, really frustrating when you teach them something. You gotta learn it for half a day just to mess up. You want to so, get their interest, okay. and then you want to go back and put the training wheels on so that they can be successful and get it done in the court. Let me get a uh, tiny. I got it as far as the table. I just can't get it. I got rows and no cards, no map. So, okay. Um, I limited it to three items. Here is uh, a fun one that I was messing around. And this is every professional sports team. By the way, I got all these right off of it. And it has the name of the team, the sport. Uh, I, I use labels. And there's what it looked like when I was recorded in from I just copied it in. This is a show. I do have cats. I just watch yours. So here's what our data looked like at the beginning. I have uh, a column right here that just says city, comma, 
Yeah. 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 So if I want to make uh, a map of all of the sports, uh, all of the cities, so you guys get to there's supposed to be some headless. We'll go to the bridge. Oh, you're driving past the driver. Yeah, the director's so I'm going to go to my create. But you said you have another account that you use to do this? No, that I for a live form. That's the only one. You want to say live form? When you create a live form that feeds into a fusion table. Oh. And there's I guess you change something to intercept because that form is on the web. If they don't look at it through so on that document, if you're going to do a live form, so let's do a collecting data from here. And I'll create that form on the Google video. Right. Not even the diffusion table, just to find just your email account. You know, like this and password. Just in report, so I have to go to the or live forms that use that sort of thing. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, just, I just have a form. I know. Oh, I, I, know. Like, I knew what you were asking, and I was trying to clarify for you. I just have a form. Yeah. 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 There's a great start. Okay, so I'm at that step. Um, so, uh, uh, I just grabbed my, my, my spreadsheet. What time are y'all going to head over to Nottingham? What time does it start? Okay, 30, I think. The trivia starts about 8.30? Yeah, so probably oh, 8 or 7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something like that. I think it's a national park. I guess I have to put it. Yeah, so the other thing is that I have to put it in a Eat there, so if you're I would say y'all don't eat there and all get together it's one of those things. Grab a bike and we're gonna eat somewhere. Okay. If you might not like my patients, I'm not getting any yellow cops. Where are y'all at? Okay, we're right next to the board. But I'm just getting it. If nothing else, y'all eat somewhere before we walk down together. So we'll see. Um, 
I think that's called stalking. Yeah, it's called stalking. Sorry. The hardest part is the first. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
uh, football, basketball, baseball, and hockey, and soccer. Yeah, because Columbus, Ohio only has soccer. You have notice Alabama. Nothing. <laughs> we only have college football. That's right. You have orange. You have orange. Yeah. You gotta say orange. My best friend in high school was born in Alabama. And we root it for Auburn all the time. So you're interested in, you know, that part of yeah. 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 So, I was like, yes, this project. Yes. So, so, I'm so, I actually like those cards. I can see those things. Cards? Yeah. I would use them for story time. I was and now I'm talking to you. Right. That was awesome. And I was saying, I can't say very often when I'm learning the new home school. You know? I didn't mean to learn. So, so then I'll awesome. come back. I am not going to be able to learn. Now I didn't say anything about fusion tables. I said, hey, do you like math? Yeah. Yeah. You got to come. That's the same thing. And I knew what fusion tables were. I didn't know what you were about. I knew what they were. I looked at them once I got them. What if I do this? What if I do this? Anything you want. But that's one of those skills that we use in a pastor, and I think that's one of those. Wow, people are like, what are the guys? I get that with this. Oh, yeah. Because it's really important, really, is really, really powerful information. It's powerful information. Could you see? Could you see? It was obvious with the prior station. Yeah. So I'm out there. Yeah. I'm out there. Yeah. I might just freelance work for five stations. I'm far away. I won't be. I won't be here. Across the lines. Oh, I love it. It is. It's actually very cool. Mm -hmm. And you think it's a teacher salary and things like uh, family schools. Oh, yeah. Like that. He's awesome. Yeah. I'm going to really stay right there. Our discussion group. Yeah, I talked for a while. When he put it on top yeah, of the yeah, it's still sad. So, yeah. Uh, well, it's just just we're going to uh, do a. Uh, and it's the school's community. And he's interested in these kids. So, you know, long story short, a lot of ideas. Yeah. Well, I would, I mean, my mind, that was my great way to end it. You can tell I did. That's why I was. You did it. I did not do it. Trying to just trying to make it work. Yeah. I guess it's my national part. Maybe it's good. I tried with other stuff. I don't know why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but there are a lot of things you find. You don't want to get anything as soon as it's available. The government kind of dumped all of their manuals. And uh, Fusion Tables went through a major revision late last year. And it changed the interface. And so the stuff the government put in there is still has the whole interface. You can click a button 
so you convert it. But instead of having a tab that says maps, there are menus. And there's a, one of the menus is visualization. And you have to click at that and you can say table. So that's sort of the one you want. Now there are tabs. But you can merge that with your now I have an opportunity. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, what about your next career? Technically, we're still on the clock here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I have a question for you. Yeah, the fire. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, you can see how one of the things we're working on now is figuring out response times to the fire petitions. Because uh, even those fires that are not close to my house, yeah. that center fire department seems to have different response times. Yeah. Do you know if there's a site out there, and I'll, I'll Google and you know, try to find it? Where, if you had an Excel sheet with addresses, the zip codes, is there a site where like, there's a function that would plug in a zip code? I don't, I don't know. It's like thousands. I that's what I was, I was like, like, there's got to be. I don't want to You could do it one by one. Yeah. Mostly, but there's got to be a way to do it. At worst, you might have to, you know, get your listing to do a form or whatever. How many fields do you have? That's ridiculous. I'm, I'm trying to. <laughs> now, the well, first thing, what if there's 14 oak trees? All right, let me put in. Is that one off here? Or is that, that's a, any chance you got two oak trees? Uh, I don't know. Because you're, you're trying to not. Because there are My problem is, I. I know the district's database as well. It's a school that I work for. But the children that I'm working at aren't coded in any way that you can pull aggregate. But you don't need zip code. Well, they have a street address. Well, but see, I don't want to use their street addresses because these are kids that are protected by the profile. Uh, I'm, now, I'm now a contractor. Okay. So I can't really use their street addresses. But, um, but so I can use zip code. Yeah, how many there are, but then it's Zip code would be fine. Yeah. If I can show that these kids are mobile around these different zip codes, yeah. or how many children we have in certain institutions from zip codes. I mean, I'm yeah, I think zip code is a great way to brainstorming right now. See, so there was speculation after the fact that that news people at least all that young information should have done it. So it's not yeah. the street. Well, the problem, the problem with that map is that both of them didn't tell a story. No. So it's the equivalent of tabloid journalism versus. I'm biased, but if you were at the yeah. county or use time to spread it, but it was something journalistic, but it was just a gotcha. Yeah, it's just yeah. really a but it's still, it poses a lot of interesting questions for people. Well, the yeah, other neighborhoods with not very many guns, their crimes got on. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's going to get a lot of buzz when people uh, took it, their, their information from online. If, if you want to, um, I just want to show you. Do you want to give that uh, uh, fire data in with time? Do you want to show it? It's, it's open, so you can be assigned. Um, just try it in the uh, well, it kind of gives you a view for it. Like, yeah. yeah. All that is a yeah. story. Yeah. Um, so, 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 I'm just I'm looking forward to the list. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we're looking for test data. So it's going to show us this is going to be a problem. But whatever's on your site, you'd like to stay public, right? That's it. It's designed to be a global data comment. So it really around the scout. So people can search by time, by topic, by sort of color. So it's high diffusion. Um, mm -hmm. But that said, Having lots of requests, like the Arizona State Social Work Professor, you know, sex trafficking study, she wants to just to generate it. So you can do that. It's like a YouTube video. You can work on it and behind your space, and you can either assign it there to share this file or assign it to the board. 
So given that it's mine's in Cloud Financial too, I could. Yeah. I could. Yeah. Um, how long have you had this idea? It's only been up a few months. And we haven't. Um, so. Uh, the guy that talked about the trips of you. Yeah. Just yeah. 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 yeah, I was thinking maybe you think of. Uh, my my wife way. has her students read uh, a busty village for the rest of the year. Yeah. Cool. So, uh, it's kind of historical fiction. This family from Detroit, I think, goes to Birmingham right before the church explosion. I could get there. They're visiting cool. or something. But there's a nice uh, Google literature for it. Yeah. Google Earth stops at every place that they stop in the block. Yeah. And, and gives you a little quiz about you know, what what happened here, or why did they do this here, or what was your record? Or, mm -hmm. yeah. Really, the combination of Google Earth and literacy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're thinking about with Barrington? Or? Um, a little bit. See, our thing is, is the actual thing. So that students, I want to see you. So you see what the presentation improve it, edit it, okay. download the raw data, so it's a real place to be true to your own Like what kids are doing when you use Exactly. It sounds like it. Mm -hmm. Especially. Mm -hmm. But I really honestly, it makes me think of Professor, she has. Um, thank you, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, that is looking at. Um, this is the last session. Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm local, so I didn't work in Phoenix. Um, who studied her whole life um, precursor to welfare programs, which is something like it's focused on women working outside the home, and Canada had a program, but she's at based in the University of Maine. Canada had this program, and she has this data about um, female migration across the border, like the early 20th century, into like, track to this program, and so they would go back and forth over the border, because women at home could get a subsidy. I don't know what you're saying. She's been tracking it, influencing it, to show how it tracks with U.S. policy. Oh, so, so so she wants to be able. So she's doing it now. She's like compiling the data. Um, and it's something similar to what you're trying to show us too. Yeah. Well, you know, like in Philadelphia, we've got kids go back and forth between Puerto Rico like maybe five times yeah. in a year. Um, right. And the problem is, I mean, so for her, that's deep history of people who are deceased. That's a game. But if you're dealing with like black people, black people, I can't use the dress. Unless, yeah. Let's see for Philadelphia. Philadelphia is so enormous, and zip code is so critical. Well, zip codes are attractive in education because you can talk about the zip code should be And then that's. So, using zip code, you can live with it. Because I'm brainstorming with this part. It's just oh. piece. Yeah. Because I come with historical knowledge, yeah. and I've been in the district 32 years, so yeah. I know I know where the bodies are, you know? Right. <laughs> I mean, right. really. So how would you, what would you show by zip code? Um, you by, have data, you're trying to get it by zip code to show movement over time. I'm thinking of two pieces. Um, I'm doing some case study yeah. pieces, because we've been out and we've seen kids, yeah. and I'm talking to kids yeah. and about kids. So I'm thinking about some case studies, uh, and I'm thinking about profiles. They've given me access to everything, it's just that I can't aggregate. Yeah. Because there's no way to aggregate these kids. They're, they just 